All right, here's an explanation on how to complete a z-test. Uh, here's a claim that the average number of coffee cups that adults drink is 21 cups per week. Now I have doubts on this um, fact, and I, got, I just got it off the internet, so who knows what kind of reliable source it is. So if I think it's too high, there's something I can do about it. What I can do is I can actually do my own investigation, and I can get a simple random sample of 100 adults and have them record how much coffee they drink per week. Now, I have to rely on the fact that they're going to be measuring and, keep, and keeping score the entire week and getting an accurate result, but let's say I've got 100 reliable adults. Um, I can get a statistic from that, that group of 100. And suppose that I get that the average from the um, the average from the 100 comes out to be 20 cups. Now that's less than the 21, but is it so far less where I can actually say this is probably false? I mean, my 100 adults aren't bound to get automatically an average of 21 cups. The group that I have, for some just reason, just sampling uh, variability, would actually could have, would probably not have 21. It would probably be different than the population's average. So is this far too far away from here to actually believe that this is true? Or is this close enough to make us believe that this is true? The way to, the way to actually track down the probability of, of, um, of how um, likely this is, considering that this has happened, can be done by using a z-test. And it's a z-test here because they're going to give us an extra fact free of charge which is kind of a, a strange fact to give us. They tell us that the sigma or the, sig or the standard deviation from the population is five cups per week. So that's maybe also given in the claim. So with all that information, I can construct a hypothesis test that takes four steps. The first step is to clearly state the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. So we'll begin by saying for our very first step, I do these in four steps. The first step is to say that the null is that the, they're telling us that the mean was 21 cups per week. It's called the null hypothesis or the ho, the ha, or the alternative hypothesis. I believe that it's not 21. I believe it's less than 21 cups. So set that up, write it out in words to even further clarify what you're trying to say. The second step for me, I've got three parts to my second step. The first part is to state which test you're going to complete. And this is going to be a one-sided z-test. It's one-sided because my alternative is less than, or if the alternative was greater than, it would still be a one-sided z-test. It would be a two-sided z-test if the alternative was not equal to, and then at the end I would double my probability. Uh, part B of this step is to check the conditions. And there are three conditions I believe that are necessary for this uh, hypothesis test to actually hold water. The first, the first condition is, was it a simple random sample? And it was. The second thing is to check whether or not your sample was large enough. Now, believe it or not, 100 people is definitely large enough to actually make some conclusions on. As long as we have over 30 or equal to 30, we're pretty safe with our sample size. Of course, the more in your sample, the better. Unless you ask too many people. There is a very strange fact. So we want our, there's a very strange fact that says that we don't want our sample to be too big. Um, we want to make sure that our sample is less than 10% of all people in the population, or all the adults. Um, so there's that strange condition there. But all three of those conditions should be met. And then the last part of my step two here is to actually set the significance level. Now, the significance level sometimes is told to you to use. But um, if it's not told to you, then you make up one. Usually 5% or 1% will be as the most commonly used for the alpha 
or the significance level. The significance level is a boundary that says that if we get below a probability of 5%, we will reject the hoe and will be in favor of the idea that the alternative is correct. I'll say that one more time. If a probability comes out to be too low, in other words, if our sample of 100 people having 20 cups of coffee for, per week for their statistic, if, that is, if the chance of that happening is lower than 5% with this in mind, then it's actually um, giving us some good evidence that this is probably not correct. If our probability is greater than 5%, then we'll, we'll be in, in support of the null hypothesis. So a little bit more of that on the last step about what that means, if this is your first time through it. Now the third step can be done mostly on the calculator. The third step is the calculation. Um, the calculation is the calculation of a z-score, turning that 20 into a standard deviation. The formula you're following is this guy right here. It's the statistic, which was 20. Take away the null parameter, or the mean, which was 21, divided by the standard deviation, which we were told was 5, and how many people we were dealing with was 100. Uh, if you do the math on this, you get negative 1 over a half. So we get a z-score of negative 2. I can take that z-score and put it onto a normal curve that's standardized, standardized to make it very easy to label and talk about. We got a z-score that was negative 2. And since our alternative hypothesis said it was less than, we will shade to the left. How likely is it that we would have be two standard deviations below the mean or further back? That probability right there is called the p-value, and that can be calculated by using the normal CDF command on the calculator or using some tables that might be available to you. So the normal CDF of negative 1,000 standard deviations to negative 2, with 0 and 1 being the mean and the standard deviation, comes out to equaling... Um, about 2%. So now we're up to our last step, is to actually state the conclusion. Since our p-value is that low, in our fourth step, we will say we will reject the hoe and be in favor of the alternative. This is a significant result kind of surprising, it came out to be a low probability. So on the fourth step is where you state your conclusion. We'd say that our p-value is less than 5%. So since that's true, we will reject the hoe in favor of the alternative hypothesis. So it is likely that the mean number of coffee cups drunk per week that Americans drink per week is less than 21. On my calculator, if I go to the um, stat button, if I go to the stat button and slide to tests, I'm performing a z-test. And I could choose statistics and type in the statistics that we were given. So if you set your screen to look like this, you can choose draw and it will give you the same picture that was up there along with the p-value.